Welcome to the Experiential Education Showcase event. Thank you for joining us. This event is hosted by the Experiential Education Center, also known as EEC. And my name is Pam Brown. I'm a coordinator in the EEC. Today, you'll hear from an organization representative and four Bristol students discuss the benefits of hands-on learning through their civic engagement and internship experiences. Their presentations were pre-recorded, but as a viewer, you'll have an opportunity to leave feedback in the chat or if you have any questions after the event, please feel free to reach out to us at the contact information provided at the bottom of the slides. I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Grace Montero, who is the Assistant Chief Probation Officer with the Massachusetts Trial Corps. Grace will give us an overview of what her organization entails and also discuss the benefits of hands-on learning from an organization's perspective. Thank you, Pam. As mentioned, my name is Grace Montero. I'm the Assistant Chief Probation Officer with Bristol County Superior Court. I've worked for the trial court for the past 23 years. And as the keynote speaker, I'd like to discuss the impact hands-on learning had on my career path and the benefits from an organizational perspective. Upon graduating from New Bedford High School, I attended BCC for one semester. As you can see in the photo ID, I was 18 years old at the time. Unfortunately, I only attended BCC for one semester. Early on, I decided that I wanted to work, party, and make money. Unfortunately, I realized that earning minimum wage was not acceptable. I applied to UMass Dartmouth only because it was closer to home. I attended UMass Dartmouth uh, and during my senior year, my advisor recommended that I complete an internship with the Superior Court. I was very resistant and intimidated by the court system. However, I met with the Chief Probation Officer who interviewed me and agreed to sponsor me as an intern. I gained valuable knowledge and experience through the internship. Upon completing the internship requirement, I remained as a volunteer for one year. I'm gonna tell you about the Massachusetts Probation Service Mission. The mission is to increase community safety, reduce recidivism, contribute to the fair and equitable administration of justice, support victims and survivors, and assist individuals and families in achieving long-term positive change. Wow, doesn't that sound exciting? From my hands-on experience, I quickly learned the value in serving my community and developed a passion for working in public service by assisting people with removing barriers from their lives. By removing certain barriers, we help them change their lives. The goal is to help probationers become productive members of society. How do we remove barriers? We collaboratively work to create a probation individual change agreement, which is also referred to a PICA. We use a lot of acronyms in the criminal justice system. The PICA is utilized throughout supervision. We work with the probationer to assist them with the areas in their lives that have contributed to their legal issues. We assist by placing them with the appropriate agencies that allow them to comply with the court order while receiving the treatment that they desperately need. We make referrals to numerous programs such as sex offender treatment, substance abuse treatment, mental health, intimate partner abuse education programs, global positioning system, GPS, and SCRAM, the secure continuous remote alcohol monitor. This device is a breathalyzer they carry with them and it's monitored through facial recognition. We also make recommendations to the court regarding their risks and their needs. What I found most beneficial during my internship was the networking. Prior to the internship, I had never entered a court, courthouse or courtroom. I was introduced to and worked closely with judges, attorneys, district attorneys, interpreters, court officers, police officers, parole officers, clerk magistrates, and of course, probation offices. What was extremely surprising to me during my internship was how helpful everyone was. Everyone that I encountered 
taught me something about their role in the court system. The information that I gathered during my internship was vital in assisting me in determining what my future goal was. My career path was to become a probation officer. The hands-on experience assisted the students in both professional and personal relationships. The knowledge and skills developed during the internship and service learning have assisted many in securing positions with the trial court, district attorney's office, clerk's office, parole, the Department of Child and Family, the Department of Youth Services, and many other agencies. The myth that students spend most of their time filing is just that, a myth. We try to balance to date with the core observations such as arraignments, dispositions, bail arguments, trials, and surrender hearings, while also assisting staff with daily activities. Additionally, once the student is comfortable, they are allowed to meet with the probationers one-on-one -on -one to gather information for the probation officer and for the court. Students also learn how to navigate the Mass Court's electronic filing system. Now, I'd be lying if I said there's no filing because there's plenty of filing to do. Students are extremely valuable to our organization. First and foremost, the friendly faces motivate the staff. Students are eager to learn and assist. They bring new ideas to the table. They have unique skills and abilities that help to improve the department's efficiency and effectiveness. Both the students and our staff enjoy the experience of learning from one another. Our staff appreciate the students assisting with their daily obligations while learning about the probation department and the court system. The Superior Court has sponsored students from BCC for the past 40 plus years. The internship is intended to be educational and to provide a meaningful experience for the students. The hands-on experience assists the students in building professional and personal relationships. In closing, we have sponsored the most amazing students from BCC. Bright, energetic, motivated, and dedicated individuals who are eager to learn about the role of the probation department and the court system. For those graduating, I wanna congratulate you. Please remember that achieving this degree is not the end of your journey, but a great beginning. For those who will remain at BCC or transition to a university, I commend you for all your hard work. Education is key to success. If you're interested in interning or learning more about the value in serving your community, I encourage you to reach out to me at the email address or phone number provided on the slide, and I will assist you with the process. Lastly, I have to end by saying that I'm very grateful to my advisor for being persistent and encouraging me to participate in the internship with the Superior Court. The internship opened doors that I had never imagined possible. I'm confident, confident that it can do the same for you. Thank you for having me and good luck to you, all of you. Thank you, Grace. Our partners in the community provide so many wonderful opportunities to our students. And it's really great hearing that our students make the most of them and leave a lasting impact on the organization. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Smith and I'm the coordinator of the Civic Engagement Program here at Bristol Community College. The Civic Engagement Program works with students, faculty, and community partners to bring together the academic experience and civic participation. This includes voting and election initiatives, recognition of volunteer service to the community, and academic service learning, which you'll be hearing more about in just a couple minutes. Throughout the summer and fall of 2020, the Civic Engagement Program, in collaboration with the community and on-campus partners, as well as faculty and staff from around the college, embarked on a campaign to engage voters during the 2020 election. As we know and have heard repeatedly, this past year has been pretty unconventional. But despite this, there were conventional norms that still needed to take place, such as our state and federal elections. Between June 2020 and November 2020, we worked as part of a collective effort to educate our local communities about voting during the pandemic. This effort focused on a wide range of topics, including voting eligibility, how to register to vote, the vote by mail process, as well as early and election day in-person voting. Over 500 people were directly engaged through direct outreach, virtual campus presentations, and a three-part live virtual event series known as Bristol Talks. 
Of course, no remote initiative would be complete without a robust social media campaign. I'm very proud to say that our social media campaign about voting engaged more than 6,000 people during that period from June 2020 to November 2020. Our commitment to serving the community requires that we do our part to create engaged citizens who become active participants in our democratic society. I would be remiss if I did not mention the students and faculty who participated in these efforts as the service learning project that was built into their academic coursework. Service learning is the core component to the civic engagement program here at Bristol. We strive to create classroom experiences that can be applied in service to the community. A hands-on experiential teaching and learning model, service learning provides students with an opportunity to apply what they are learning in class as they are learning it which allows for a stronger mastery and enhanced learning of course content. Students are then able to create a reciprocal relationship with the community as they take what they are learning and use it in service to help meet a need within their community. Service learning provides students with what I call the trifecta of greatness, uh, academic growth, personal enhancement, and professional skill development. When students are able to integrate service into their academic experience, they are better equipped to identify and critically analyze issues within their community. Students may or may not be directly impacted by these issues. So the ability to identify and connect with the experiences of others deepens empathy and can create a sense of purpose. Additionally, students develop the tools to craft a plan to tackle local problems, expanding both awareness and efficacy in one's ability to create a positive impact. Students are also able to take away from their experiences what are known as soft skills, things like communication, time management, and group collaboration, as well as have the ability to network with others, um, both of which are fantastic professional development opportunities that will benefit any student, no matter what career path they're going into. In a typical year, much of this service would happen in a direct way, with students spending time on site at a local nonprofit or performing outreach to both the on-campus and surrounding community. With so much work moving to a remote environment due to the pandemic, we needed to work with our campus and community partners to create more project-based and digital service learning opportunities. So students could continue to serve others from their home. Our desire to serve was increased during a time that has been difficult for so many and where connection to others was needed more than ever. This was demonstrated by the deep commitment of our faculty who taught nearly 40 courses with service learning embedded and the more than 400 students who participated in service learning throughout this academic year. Many students participated in direct service at local food distribution programs, including Bristol's own mobile food market, which distributes fresh produce and groceries every month to families struggling with food insecurity. Even more students participated in project-based or remote service learning through mentorship programs, advocacy campaigns, and assisting local nonprofits with their web presence and community outreach. We are now going to hear from two of these dedicated students, Sumetta and Rachel, who will tell you about their experiences in service learning projects. I'm Sumetta Velkamage. I'm a CIS computer programming and web development major student. I had the opportunity of doing uh, two service learning projects with uh, Bristol Community College. Uh, the first one was in all 2020. Uh, I established the uh, Bird Club at uh, BCC. And then the next project was uh, in the spring 2021 uh, semester. Uh, I re redesigned a website for Connect Partnership, uh, a local uh, nonprofit organization. I was interested in service learning projects uh, to get a con to connect with the community and also to get uh, practical work experience. Uh, I'm a recent immigrant from Sri Lanka. Uh, I was I came here in 2017, so. Uh, while I was in Sri Lanka, like I, I was working for like 20 years in different fields, mainly tourism and community development. So uh, I was involved in my local community and in national and international, uh, internationally representing Sri Lanka in different forums. So I was connected with my community. So when I came here, like I lost that uh, connection, like uh, I wanted to be involved in the community. So uh, I took the, some of the classes uh, to gain that experience uh, or the, to gain that exposure. Uh, and also uh, 
computer programming and web development is a new thing for me. Like I have never learned or never worked in that field. Uh, so for both my service learning projects, I try to address uh, these, these uh, two things that I was lacking. So uh, the first service learning project, uh, uh, Bristol Bird Club, uh, was uh, it was a result of uh, honor seminar in community leadership. Uh, so why Bird Club? Uh, so the, the the class required us to uh, do a leadership project to take leadership and implement something. And then uh, bird watching was a personal interest of me. Uh, I was a member of the uh, field ornithology group of Sri Lanka since 1998, uh, and I was I'm, I'm a bird watcher, and I wanted to continue bird watching uh, when I moved to USA. Uh, but I was new. I was learning things, so uh, I, I wanted to uh, practice. And then uh, I took one of the classes uh, uh, on bio. Um, bird biology of and behavior of birds uh, at school. And so I thought like, okay, for my project, I will do the, uh, I, I will try to uh, reestablish the bird, bird club. Uh, the process was, uh, I, uh, first I contact the student and family engagement uh, to, uh, because I saw in, in one of the surveys that uh, they, they, uh, the bird club was listed at one of the club in the, in the college. And I knew, I got to know that uh, it is uh, not functioning at the moment. Uh, so I got a list of uh, people, students who are interested in bird club. And then I got hold with the uh, previous advisor. Uh, and then uh, with, through even email communications, because the school was closed due to a pandemic. Uh, so we got the, we collect the group together. And then uh, we finally, with some communication and things like, through Zoom, uh, we established the bird club. Uh, the challenges were like, I was nervous, like, uh, can I do this? Uh, this is, uh, I'm not expert in birds uh, in, in USA. I'm just started learning. And then uh, those are the challenges. And also like culturally, like, like can I lead, the, lead a group of students? Uh, like, can I provide the leadership? So those were, Sort of challenges, but the the learning from the uh, from the class and the uh, discussions we had in in our class. So those things uh, helped me to uh, boost my confidence. And finally, uh, we established the bird club. Even though we didn't have in person activities, we uh, meet through Zoom and we discussed uh, about things. So it, it gave sort of a feeling of community. Uh, uh, I mean, belong to a community in the in the school, and also but, uh, it gave some of the uh, some of our members to interact with uh, each other during this period. Service learning project for this semester was uh, redesigning the uh, Connect Partnership website. Uh, Connect is a nonprofit organization that's a Southern Massachusetts Public Higher Education Partnership. So they wanted to uh, redesign their website. The current site is not. Uh, responsive side, uh, uh, it is difficult to view from different screen sizes, for example, a mobile phone or a tablet. Uh, so I, my task was to redesign it so that the viewers from uh, uh, can, users can watch it uh, on any device without uh, uh, much problem. Uh, so the process was I uh, first I contacted the organization and we had a couple of meetings to understand like what they really want and then uh, to explain them what I can do as a student uh, because I'm not a professional in this industry. Uh, so they were okay with my proposal and uh, so I started and uh, I go ahead with the uh, redesigning. Uh, the challenges were like at the beginning, uh, I wanted to experiment all the features I learned at the the, at my you know, with my classes, but uh, soon I realized that it's not going to happen. Uh, it, it it will make things difficult, and also uh, I remember the the what my professor was always telling that keep it simple. So I just kept it simple, uh, and then uh, when I presented the side the draft side, they were really happy about it, and uh, now. We are in the process of making uh, some minor changes, uh, uh, so soon it will be 
uh, hosted and the new site will be on, uh, available to, uh, uh, to see use. Uh, the experience and outcome is, uh, the experience was uh, really like uh, I had to uh, search many things and then I have, uh, I didn't, I don't have uh, experience in graphic designing or web designing. So I have to learn a little bit of graphic designing with the, to work with the images. And so it, it was a learning experience, like uh, uh, from just doing a class assignments and engaging something that, uh, that addressed the real world need. Uh, so the overall, this project gave me the confidence uh, that I could do uh, something that uh, uh, what I learned from the college, of, in this college, college. Uh, that I can uh, uh, use it to uh, give a, develop a real world uh, solution. So uh, overall, the service learning projects give me uh, the, the ability or the, the experience to, to uh, experiment what I learned from the classes. And also, uh, I think this is a good opportunity, especially if you have, uh, when you are looking for a new, uh, a new, new career path, uh, which, uh, which is new to you, and also like when you are trying to connect with the community uh, where you don't have much experience. So it, it was a, a good experience for me. Hi, I'm Rachel Hudson. I'm a wife, a mom of five, a student at PCC, and. I work for a couple different caterers. I'm in the culinary arts department. I have recently graduated in the baking and pastry department, um, and now I'm pursuing a culinary degree. I have been the Demello Cushman president for five years now, and my class for service learning is Culinary 112. Uh, part of the PTO is we host a family breakfast every year where we feed over 350 children and adults. Obviously, we couldn't do it this year because of COVID, but we're looking forward to doing it again next year. The menu consists of pancakes, bacon, sausage, and healthy options as well. We also make over 250 gingerbread cookies and frosting, and we purchase different toppings so that way every child can make his or her own gingerbread cookie. Um, it brings joy to see the children having a wonderful time and just doing it at their own pace. I enjoy helping out the community as much as possible. Uh, when we have leftover food from our events, we donate to local homeless shelters um, along with Council on Aging. We feel that we are giving back to the community even more. My goals is to continue raising my family, continue with my education, and I am also teaching my children how to give back to the community. Thank you so much to our service learning students for sharing your experiences with your projects this year. Your work is truly inspiring. My name is Jennifer Arilas, and I am the Internship Program Coordinator in the Experiential Education Center here at Bristol Community College. I would now like to shift our focus from our Civic Engagement Program to our Internship Program. I wanted to start off by first providing you with some general information about Bristol's internship program. We require that students participating in the program be in good academic standing. Prior to even being placed in an internship, the Experiential Education Center works closely with students to ensure that they are prepared for success. This includes everything from resume development, interview preparation, conducting a search for internship opportunities and application assistance. While enrolled in our internship seminar course, students complete a minimum of 120 hours a week of supervised work in the field while simultaneously completing the coursework assigned in our internship seminar course. The course touches upon crucial professional development topics such as work values, effective workplace communication, management styles, and personality types, to name a few. Here at Bristol, we pride ourselves on supporting students before, during, and after the internship experience, and equipping them with tools to build upon their skill set. Internships are a high impact practice that affords students the opportunity to connect theory and practice. 
students benefit from participating in internships in a number of ways. First, internships are a perfect way for students to determine career fit, especially if they intend on transferring to a four-year institution to earn a bachelor's degree. We always encourage our students to take advantage of an internship now to confirm that they are on the right track and to ultimately save on time and money. Next, they gain valuable hands-on learning experiences that allow them to apply what they've learned in the classroom to their place of employment. Internships are an excellent way for students to develop marketable skills and a competitive resume. Lastly, internships allow students the opportunity to begin networking in their field of study. How great is it that students can leave Bristol already having made connections in the field, along with a professional reference who can speak to their workability when applying for future opportunities? Despite the pandemic, we had 40 students participate in internships throughout the summer 2020, fall 2020, and spring 2021 semesters. These students represented 11 different degree programs and participated in a variety of internship experiences for both for-profit and nonprofit organizations. 16 students were able to leverage current employment to work with their supervisors to build upon their skill set. Many of our partners were able to accommodate students by offering remote or hybrid opportunities. It's important to highlight that prior to the pandemic, very few of our students participated in fully remote internship opportunities. So over the past academic year, we saw an exponential increase in the number of opportunities being offered. As a result of our employer's adaptability, our students were able to stay on track, gaining experience while in a global pandemic. We are grateful to our community partners for being flexible in their offerings, allowing our students to continue to gain valuable experience in their field of study. I have had the honor and privilege of facilitating our internship seminar course. And I have seen firsthand how valuable these experiences have been for students and employers alike. Students and employers have been pushed outside of their comfort zones and have embraced a number of remote collaboration tools over the past 15 months. Students have taken advantage of opportunities that may have previously been deemed unavailable due to transportation challenges. Employers were afforded the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with their interns to accomplish projects while still providing the support necessary for success. They accepted the challenge to break away from the traditional internship model and rethink what an internship experience could be. Without these partnerships, flexibility, innovation, and openness to change, our students' successes would not be possible. I'd now like to hand it over to two student presenters, Lydia and Erin, who will discuss their internship experiences this year. My name is Lydia Bolger. I received a degree in Office Administration Executive Administrative Assistant from Bristol Community College this past December. My internship was in the summer of 2020. I interned with the Southeastern Massachusetts Regional Dispatch Center for the towns of Easton, Foxborough, Mansfield, and Norton. My job there mainly consisted of administrative work. I worked about 24 to 30 hours a week. My internship helped strengthen my office skills in a real workplace and the internship seminar course gave me a lot of competencies that were provided through thoughtful assignments that included reflection and problem solving. My biggest tips that I can give you when working through an internship and taking coursework is to make sure that you take short breaks from your coursework and your assignments. Make sure that you ask for help if you need it and make time for yourself away from your coursework so you don't get overwhelmed and you're able to step back from your assignments and look at them with a fresh eye. I've included here a sample of my work. This is one of the forms that I made for 
the regional dispatch center when they were interviewing new hire prospects for the command center. I really enjoyed my internship and I think I've learned a lot from it. The coursework were, was fantastic. I was able to apply my knowledge that I learned from Bristol Community College in a real workplace setting and get me back into the mode of working in an office again. I graduated in the class of 2021 as the salutatorian and my educational goals in the future are to continue my education in web design and development and to become a web developer in the future. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Collins. I'm a student in the office administration program. I completed my internship with CIC Health, a partner with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Stop the Spread Testing Program. We are facilitating ongoing no-cost COVID-19 PCR testing for Fall River and the surrounding areas. Our site facilitates self-administered testing and my position as a site host is to explain, monitor, and assist patients with the sample collection. I assist in the organization's effort to provide COVID-19 testing in the community. And I also serve as the first point of communication for patients accessing the tests in person. I must operate within the protocols established for screening humans for possible infection. My other responsibilities include making COVID test appointments, greeting the, the patient, and distributing and collecting all necessary information to activate them within our system. The class portion of this program enabled me to reflect on the knowledge I was gaining at my internship site. This class also provided me with information needed to aid me in my internship, as well as tools to help me after my graduation and my future career path. The journal reflections were the most effective tool in the class that I found. I was able to reflect each week on what I was learning. It also gave me a deeper understanding of what I was gaining during my internship. Time management was an essential tool to balance school, my internship, family, and all of my other responsibilities. My husband took over most of our family duties and I scheduled my schoolwork around my internship hours. It has been a crazy couple of months, but I've managed to keep up with all of my responsibilities. For anyone that is preparing to enter this program, I recommend creating a detailed schedule that would enable them to keep up with their internship, schooling, and any other obligations they may have. I would also like to tell them to not be afraid to reach out for help. Working an internship while trying to complete all of your assignments can be more than overwhelming. There is not anything wrong with asking for help and letting those around you lend you a helping hand. My internship has exposed me to an excellent example of leadership. One of my primary goals for my career is to work my way up into a position of leadership. My internship has also taught me a lot about what a good leader is. At CIC Health, I have been able to observe my own supervisor and gain knowledge about what that entails. My time at CIC has also taught me great customer service skills, problem solving, and innovative thinking. The class portion helped me recognize how my internship experience was helping me to grow as a professional, as well as the skills I needed to succeed. I was able to fine tune my communication skills by helping our patients successfully create their accounts and perform their tests. I was able to recognize the importance of verbal, body, and written communication. I was also able to develop solutions for language barriers which required critical thinking. The critical and innovative thinking skills that I have acquired during this internship is one of the largest professional gains that I have earned. I've seen firsthand how to handle various situations as a leader there is also a good portion of this job that is independent, but teamwork is imperative. Our site would not function the way it does without that teamwork. This internship in combination with the class has provided me with invaluable knowledge and skills that are essential to the next step in my career path.
I was originally unaware of all the preparation that was needed for this class and did not know I needed the internship in place before the start of classes. When I reached out to the experiential education program, they were able to quickly get me enrolled in the class and provided me with all the information I needed to find an internship. I had about two weeks to find one and I was lucky enough that I was able to get into CIC Health so quickly. This program and its staff have been a very important part of my education and what will become my career. We'd like to take this time to spotlight an additional partner and students that also participated in EEC's service learning and internship programs. Here's a brief highlight from their experiences. our presentations. The EEC staff would like to take this time to thank our presenters for the valuable information that you shared. Thank you to our viewers that attended the event. We'd also like to thank our community partners and Bristol faculty and staff that continue to engage in and support our department's programs. We'd also, of course, like to thank the Bristol Marketing and Communications Department that helped us coordinate this event. For anyone that's interested in staying up to date on EEC programs that we discussed today, you can follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at EEC Bristol. Thank you and have a good night.